Welcome to I Remember When, a 30-minute program on Fitchburg history created by the Fitchburg Historical Society, located in the Phoenix Building at 781 Main Street in downtown Fitchburg. The Fitchburg Historical Society was founded in 1892 by James F.D. Garfield and some of his friends. Its mission was, and still is, to preserve, protect, and interpret the history of Fitchburg, Massachusetts. We are an independent nonprofit, supported by our members, donors, and charitable gifts. This is the beginning of a new TV program on Fitchburg history called I Remember When. The COVID-19 pandemic has spurred us to create new ways to learn about Fitchburg's history right there in your own home. And we will be creating many more of these shows. Many of you watching may know that we are building on the extraordinary work of Joy Contoy and Ann O'Connor, both local historians who love Fitchburg and created TV shows on the city's history for FATV. We know that many of you first learned about Fitchburg history with their shows. And we welcome you to the next chapter in exploring the history of this unique and fascinating city. We chose this week's subject for our very first show because we have an historical document that we and the public have always loved. It shows us Fitchburg's people, buildings, and streets in movie footage that was made at a pivotal time in 20th century history. At the end of the Great Depression, there was a team of movie makers who would visit a city and create a film that could be shown at a local movie theater to raise money. A community group like the Rotary or the Kiwanis would front some money for the filming, and then a movie would be shot, edited, and projected locally to help benefit local charities. The Fitchburg Historical Society owns the film that was shot in Fitchburg in November 1941. It shows the Veterans Day Parade, and the city knew that war might just be around the corner. As a matter of fact, the attack on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese happened less than a month later, and President Roosevelt declared the entry of the United States into World War II. So if you remember that era, you may even recognize somebody in the footage we see today, or even see yourself. The original movie has been carefully preserved by the Historical Society. This year it was cleaned up and digitized thanks to Professor Charles Roberts and Fitchburg State University. Today we are showing just eight tantalizing minutes from this movie. Today's footage shows you the city's pride in its schools, its children, its churches, and its hopes for the future. The people who created this movie were encouraging community feeling by reminding Fitchburg citizens of the city's downtown, industrial sector, and urban fabric. We also couldn't help but notice how it celebrates Fitchburg's diversity, even in this short clip. From the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s, Fitchburg was an industrial center. The factories clustered around the Nashua River, and residential neighborhoods sprung up around the factories. People walked from their homes to work. Often, factory workers came from a shared ethnic background, especially if they were importing skills from their original homes to a new home in America. They worked, worshipped, raised their children, and enjoyed recreation in neighborhood groups. Some of the best known of these neighborhoods are the Patch, Greek Town, Fintown, or Cleghorn. For example, immigrants from Sweden came to Fitchburg to work as skilled cabinet makers, masons, carpenters, bricklayers, and domestics. Ivor Johnson, a renowned industrialist of Swedish descent who immigrated from Norway, employed many fellow Swedish machinists in his Arms and Cycle Works Manufacturing Company. They settled on Leighton, Kimball, and West Streets. In 1892, a small group of 45 called Reverend Group as its pastor, and the Congregation of the Swedish Evangelical Congregational Church was officially organized on February 1st. The Finns arrived in Fitchburg when Finland was suffering under repeated famines and political oppression by the Russian Empire. 
In Fitchburg, the men may have worked in the pulp mills or in the granite quarries on Rollstone Hill. The women were highly regarded as domestic employees, very poor when they arrived and separated from others by their difficult language, the Finns settled close to each other near Mechanic and High Street. They were a literate population but tended to retain the Finnish language for a few generations rather than switching to English. It's helpful to understand the context of the scenes you will be viewing. In November 1941, the De Great Depression was just ending, and World War II had been going on in Europe for two years and in Asia for four. America, officially neutral in the fall of 41, was in reality actively engaged in the war. The Lend-Lease program, with which America supplied the Allies with food, fuel, and war material, had been enacted by Congress in March. Additionally, after Nazi Germany invaded Poland in 1939, President Roosevelt declared a neutrality patrol to protect shipping in U.S. waters. On October 31, 1941, just before these films were shot, an American Navy destroyer, the USS Reuben James, had been torpedoed and sunk by a German submarine while protecting a convoy. In 1941, in a post-depression and pre-World War II era, Fitchburg valued the education of their children, hometown music and sports, neighborhoods, and the practice of religion. Because everything goes by so fast, I thought I'd describe a little bit of what you see in the uh, pictures filmed at the schools. What you see is uh, they're really emphasizing the vocational education. So we see the boys working on a printing press, and we also see the girls learning home economics. So you notice that it's quite gender segregated between boys and girls. Uh, there's also a science class shown and uh, a kind of new technology, which is the new medium of radio. They're showing uh, the kids broadcasting from station BFB, so that's from the BF Brown School, and they're actually broadcasting on the radio.
And finally, we see kids uh, doing calisthenics in physical education class. And that was something that was hugely popular in the 1930s, was the idea of people coming together to exercise and to get in much better shape through doing calisthenics. And we see the younger kids uh, doing square dancing, which was a big fad at this time. It was, uh, there was an interest in connecting with early American history through kids and adults learning how to square dance. Here's the Fitchburg High School marching band showing off their school colors. Football games were and are still played in historic Crocker Field, designed by landscape architects Frederick Law Olmsted and Company. The traditional Thanksgiving rivalry game played between the Fitchburg and Lemonster High School football teams is one of the oldest sports rivalries in the country. The churches pictured in this video reflect the heritage of the beliefs of those who sought to build them. They were located in the neighborhoods near the industries in which the Fitchburg residents lived and worked. In 1864, the cornerstone was laid for a new church building at the corner of Main and Snow Streets, the Rollstone Congregational Church. The religious society had been holding services in the American House, a hotel located near Railroad Park built by David Bautel. Bautel, a deacon in the church, contributed $28,000 to the building fund. Bautel Chapel was named in his honor. The structure was dedicated in 1870. Also in 1864, the parishioners of Christ Episcopal Church voted to purchase a lot on Main Street for a church building. Alva Crocker's wife, Lucy, was a communicant of the church and he attended services with her. Alva contributed the cost of the land, $9,000, and his personal services on a fundraising committee. Richard Upton, an internationally known architect, designed the church in a neo-Gothic style. The church was consecrated in April, 1868. Records indicate that the first Baptist congregation in, in Fitchburg existed in 1784. The Baptists constructed a church on Main Street, built in 1833. No longer in existence, the building we see in the movie was sold to the city in 1964, torn down to make way for a new public library, the one we know today. When land across from the Calvinistic Congregational Church was made available, and help was forthcoming from other contributors in the community, the cornerstone of the Swedish Evangelical Congregational Church building was laid in 1895. Today, the former church is home to the New Players Theater Guild. On September 29, 1895, the Finnish Evangelical Congregational Church 
was born with eight charter members under leadership of the Reverend Andrew Group. In 1902, Reverend Group purchased land on Elm Street and presented it to the small Finnish parish as a site for a church building. By sacrifice and strict economy, the parish managed to build a church. At five o'clock on Christmas morning, 1904, the congregation sang Joy to the World for the first time in its new building with Reverend Group as its permanent pastor. The Calvinist Congregational Church dates back to the very earliest years of the 1800s. The building we see here in 1941 has been expanded with an addition and facade by Fitchburg's most important architect, H.M. Francis. Today, the building is owned by Casa de Gracia y Restauración, a Hispanic bilingual congregation. In 1903, St. Francis of Assisi Parish Church was created to serve this vicinity. Louis Langloy, appointed the first pastor, proceeded at once to build a structure to serve both as a school and a chapel. At the Historical Society, there is email correspondence from Carl Erickson, which reads as follows. I was four years old on that Sunday afternoon when news of the Pearl Harbor attack began to roll into Fitchburg over WBZ. At first, the war was beyond my comprehension, but it soon caused me great anxiety. My mother was an avid movie fan and took me along to matinees at the Cummings Theater on Blossom Street nearly every week. The movie tone news and the march of time carried vivid pictures of the war in Europe and in the Pacific, and the images of soldiers swathed in bloody bandages as well as the thunder of artillery sent me screaming into the theater's lobby. For several years, I was too freaked out to even watch Bambi or Snow White. Now, with the Fitchburg economy, what was happening during that time transitioning from the Great Depression into World War II? Well, Fitchburg was, uh, st had always been a large manufacturing city. Uh, textiles, clothing, uh, steel, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but we were also uh, getting more, there was a lot more retail uh, involvement at the time. Now, once the war began, then uh, the everything shifted to a war economy. And so, for instance, Simon Saw and Steel uh, was manufacturing armor for tanks. And uh, there were little little companies uh, all around that were building small things that, you know, just kind of like, almost like a cottage industry, uh, war materials. And I don't, can't think of any offhand, I'd have to look that up, but, uh, uh, and actually Simons was, uh, they, they used to give a, uh, an award every year for companies that, that produced uh, very, uh, you know, high quality uh, materials and, uh, and, and, you know, they, they met all their manufacturing goals and whatever. And Simons was one of, I think, maybe a dozen in the country that managed to get five of these star awards uh, for, for their manufacturing prowess.
So if anything that you've seen here today has made you remember a story about Fitchburg history that you can share with us, please get in touch with us either through the Facebook page or by emailing us at welcome at fitchburghistoricalsociety.com or by calling us at 978-345-1157. We hope you will get involved. You could even send us an old-fashioned letter at P.O. Box 953, Fitchburg, Massachusetts, 01420. We'd love to hear from you.